All right, well, it's a windy day, but we're gonna give this a try anyways. Um, this bike has forward controls on it, so it's actually set up for a taller rider. Kawasaki has a ergo fit system on all their bikes, which basically allows any bike to fit any person. So, without further ado, let's take this thing for a ride. So this bike has 61 horsepower and around 46 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it redlines at 9,500 RPM. That's, that's insane for a cruiser. That's literally insane. So you can definitely see from just the RPMs that this is definitely a Kawasaki Ninja motor. Nice clunk in the first. Now it's got a slipper clutch, so the clutch is very smooth. Okay, okay, very smooth. Definitely sounding like a crotch rocket. And that's not a complaint either. It's light like a crotch rocket too. This is a 500 pound cruiser. Wow, okay, that, that exhaust is really nice. A little loud, but I like loud. Wow, okay. Okay, the brake is really nice. You know, I'm not a fan of single disc front brake, but I'm not gonna lie, this is uh, very nice for a front brake. Now let's see what kind of power this thing has. Wow. Jeez. I would have never expected a pull like that from a sub thousand cc cruiser bike. I mean, people call this an entry level bike. Wow, I, you know, I would even say this is too much for an entry level rider. This is one hell of a bike. It's very smooth too. Now that suspension preload in the rear is set to about halfway, so it is uh, about halfway stiff. Feels pretty good to me. Very agile. Wow. So I can already tell you, this bike will kick the shit out of my Honda Shadow 750. This bike is something else. It is smooth. It purrs right along. It doesn't seem to struggle anywhere, you know? A lot of people assume that because it's a Ninja 650 motor that it's going to be gutless in the lower RPMs, but I'm not getting that. Kawasaki took this Ninja motor and apparently they designed it for mid-range torque and uh, I think they changed things like cams and heads or something like that. Wow, <laughs> that's fun. This is fun. This is a great bike. This is a lot of bike for the money. Honestly, this is this is a lot of bike for the money. Wow. So the first thing I notice is how agile it is. I mean, it's a cruiser bike, but it does not feel like a cruiser. 
I'm not used to forward controls, but this isn't too bad. And if this was my bike, I would probably give it mid controls. I would adjust the controls to, to suit my needs a little better. The owner of this bike is a pretty tall guy. So right now, I'm doing about 65 miles an hour, and I'm at 46 to 4700 RPM. And when I give it gas, it starts to pull. This thing is not gutless by any means. This thing is not gutless at all. This is an impressive bike. I don't think I've ever come across a 650cc cruiser that can handle like this thing. I mean, th this thing's got performance. I am very impressed with this motorcycle. Oop, taking it wide, whoops. thing is smooth as butter the shifts are very nice you don't feel any buzzing in the handlebars you feel a little rumble in your feet but really nothing to complain about I mean it just pulls away no problem if there's anybody out there wanting to ride and they they don't have any experience at all, I would highly recommend the Kawasaki Vulcan S. This bike is extremely forgiving. It's very comfortable. I'm liking the ride. It's very smooth. Quite impressed by this motorcycle. I'm kind of a sporty guy. I traded in my Honda Shadow 750 for a Triumph Rocket 3. And obviously, many of you know I have a Triumph Speed Twin now. And I can tell you what, although this is not a Triumph, This is not a Triumph. This is right up my alley. I love performance bikes. And although this is not fast by any means, this thing is stupid quick. And for a sub thousand cc cruiser, th this thing is balls to the walls. The hype is real, my friends. If, if any of you guys have been on the fence about buying this bike and you've seen all the videos, you've seen John from John's Moto Garage pop a wheelie on this thing, you've seen Moto Chooch do a review on it. I've watched all those videos and the one thing they all have in common is that they are blown away by this bike. It is, it is a wolf in sheep's clothing for sure. Just looking at the spec sheet, and the price, you would not know what kind of bike this is until you get on and ride it. Okay, it brakes hard. It brakes hard for a single disc front brake. I can dig it. The rear brake isn't too bad either. You gotta, you gotta definitely give it some input, but it's not bad. Exhaust, wow. This is one of those bikes where either you love it or you hate it. You know, if you're not into the, the sound of this Ninja, then you're probably not gonna, you're not probably not gonna like the Vulcan S. 
but if you just like motorcycles and you keep an open mind to everything and you enjoy it for what it is oh, it actually wasn't too bad those were some of the worst tracks in town and this bike was very composed over those railroad tracks It's funny how uh, a lot of larger cruisers don't redline until like 5,000 to 6,000 RPM or so. But uh, this thing, this thing doesn't even uh, get started until like 4,000 RPM and then, it, and then it really starts to take off. The exhaust is a little droney for me, I'm not going to lie, but, but listen, this is not a stock bike. This is equipped with an exhaust already. It's got a Dalkevic can on it. It's quite short if you ask me. But then again, I've always been a firm believer that loud pipes do save lives. gets up to speed quick. I might even uh, try and do a zero to 60 on this thing real quick. Maybe I'll put it in another video, who knows. Still, I bet you you could get at least a four second zero to 60 out of this thing. comfortable too honestly I, I don't know what there is left to say about this bike I I'm thoroughly impressed well folks that was one hell of a ride I'll tell you that very impressed I give this bike a five out of five my only complaint get different side mirrors thanks for watching everybody take care